Charlotte, why do all good things come to an end? Hmm, that's such a good question. Hi everybody, welcome to today's episode of Trunk Talk where we talk about the Kia Stinger and why it was the right car but the wrong time. Mm. My name's Gabby. And I'm Charlotte. And today we're gonna dive right into everything we love and everything that led to the demise of the Kia Stinger, a true GT sports sedan with a hatchback. So this video is gonna be, or I guess this podcast episode is gonna be a little bit about our personal opinions, also what we've seen here as trends at a dealership, because of course, we're not just a podcast or a YouTube channel, we do work for a Kia dealer, so we do have sales, service, and just general dealer experience. We saw the Stinger come in to play in 2017 as a yep. 2018 model, and through its six years as our flagship vehicle, we saw it come to an end. Oh, it was so sad. Now, Charlotte, what did you think of the Kia Stinger? So I loved the Stinger. I, and a little bit more on this later, but I think it was one of the first things that really showed a lot of the brand's potential. Mm -hmm. I love that it had kind of that fastback, sporty saloon type of vibe. Again, love that it was a hatch. It was a five-seater. A true and family it, car. It was, yeah, a true family car. <laughs> I loved the powertrain and the tech and the design. And I, it was just a vehicle where I remember being so impressed by it. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I think still a lot of people talk about when they think of Kia. And they're like, yeah, you know, that, that one car I saw, it was a really good looking car. And yeah. usually it's the Kia Stinger. But you were obviously a long time and big time fan of the Stinger. Oh, what were some things you loved about it? I still cry about it sometimes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so the Kia Stinger, um, when it was introduced, I wasn't working for Kia yet, but my mom was. And she would always talk about, oh, new Stinger, new Stinger. And I was like, oh, it's a Kia, whatever. And then I started working here and then I got to drive one from the second I switched into sport mode and that bolstering tightened up, yeah. <laughs> hugged me really. And we did launch control. I had an instant grin on my face. That car changed everything for me and it really changed my perspective on what Kia was as a brand. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think, and also Patrick Carter, dealer principal agrees, Kia, it was the right car at the right time, not the wrong time. So even though it was discontinued, it came here for a reason and Charlotte, why? What, what was that reason? Well, exactly the reaction that you had yeah. is the reaction that a lot of people had. So I'm just going to refer to my notes here to make sure I've got everything correct. <laughs> but basically, having the Kia Stinger for Kia, it was a real transformative event in the car maker's history because it really changed the perspective a lot of people had on Korean cars. Yeah. Specifically, Kia and Hyundai as a brand. They are sister companies. Um, and really, it showcased Kia's ability with the fact that they can produce an exciting vehicle. Mm -hmm. Typically, the brand has very much been purpose-driven, and the purpose has really been anything other than excitement. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Kia Stinger came into play. So for, you know, a lot of people love that it was the combination of style, substance, modern features on a lower, all at a lower price point than necessarily its German, than its German competitors and counterparts. Um, as Gabby said, it was introduced in 2017, and a lot of the articles that I read on this car being introduced is a lot of people were just saying it's properly exciting. Oh, it is so nice. And I like that they use the word properly too, because it's like, yeah, this is something in the auto world to get excited about. This is something for Kia to get excited about mm -hmm. too. Um, and basically what this vehicle was is it was Kia's Halo project. So if you're unfamiliar with kind of what a Halo project is, is it's something that really allowed the Kia design and engineering team to show what they can really do. Yeah. You know? And that was a true testament to it. I mean, absolutely. that car, so in its debut, we often did a lot of track days. A lot of mm -hmm. dealerships would take it to the track and see, okay, sports sedan, let's see what it really does. And this track, truck, <laughs> this car was tracking all day. And without mm -hmm. a break, it just ran and ran and ran. And every single time, it ran clean, it ran good. It was, it was a true sports car. Yeah, and it's not like it was just being tested here. Like, it was tested all over the world. It was tested yeah. on the Nürburgring, which... Uh, that's iconic. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. Iconic. Yeah. Uh, my words are all slurring together now. Apparently it's that time of the day. But, but around that time, so let's say 2018, you yeah. say, oh, I'm going to the track. What car are you taking? Oh, my Kia. Everyone will look at you like... Me and my Kia Rio. <laughs> yeah, me, me and my Rio, me and my Kia Soul. What do you mean you're taking your Kia to the track? Mm -hmm. Kia Stinger changed everything. And now we have even more sporty models and that's not stopping. No, no. And really that came about because of the stinger. Yeah. Uh, but going back a little bit to it, the idea of that Halo project is this vehicle, it was built to show off what they can do. It wasn't necessarily designed to be a volume seller. Yes, yeah. And in our first year, I think Tim gave us the data, we sold 16, which again, like that's really good. And we had them all lined up, every trim, a lot yeah. of different colors, but we never really sold as many after that. And that's interesting because it's like, well, why 
Would a business or an automaker design a car but not necessarily have it be designed to sell? Mm -hmm. It seems a little bit counterintuitive. Right. Do you have any thoughts on that? So that makes me think of the <laughs> Nissan GTR. No, oh. no one's buying those. It's been unchanged for so long now. But it's a legendary car. And it really changed. I guess Nissan had a lot of sporty yeah. upcomings later on or earlier on, I should say. Um, Kia, not so much, though. So we really needed something that would change people's idea of Kia. The Stinger brought sportiness, but also mm -hmm. brought comfort and a more luxurious feel that we never really had on our cars before. Yeah, absolutely. It's hard to find a car that you have launch control on, or the Kia lineup, I should say, that you get launch control, but you also get ventilated seats and a beautiful big panel roof and just limited slip differential. All those things mm -hmm. combined together whether you're a sports enthusiast, sports car enthusiast, I should say, or just someone who wants a sleek, comfortable sedan, the Stinger fit both. Both molds. molds. Yeah, absolutely. But in fitting both of those molds, it also made it an incredibly niche market. Yes. You no, know, this wasn't something that was necessarily designed to compete with an Accord or a Camry. That's kind of where we get the K5 Optima uh, Forte type segments. Um, and also in North America, which is obviously where myself and Gabby are. We're in Canada. Yep. Um, Sedans aren't so hot. I was going to say, what is it the bulk of people are buying? Yep. SUVs, crossovers, that kind of thing. If they are buying sedans, typically it's just a compact, very fuel efficient, mm -hmm. cheap sedan. And the Stinger was neither of those things. So. Yeah, liter literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, another reason, and this isn't necessarily key as the OEM's fault per se, or, you know, a flaw on them than, you know, the niche market and stuff like that. But also some dealers really took advantage. Yeah. So I heard people, Canada, States, no matter where, they were having really bad experiences with mm -hmm. Kia dealers because they were treating them. The Stingers, obviously, it is a more upscale car compared to something, let's say, like a base model Rio. Yeah. They're not going to be the same buyer. But they were kind of being very hmm, about who could buy the Stinger. And they were ripping people off. Yeah, they were some really, really hefty market adjustment fees, which I know we're probably all familiar with that term now. Yeah. I'm super gr glad that we weren't, you know, a part of that. Yeah. Still aren't. Still aren't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, all of a sudden, these dealers, and I heard a lot of it, a lot of this stuff was taken from the U.S. I'm sure it was still going on in Canada, too. Yeah. But, like, you can't be treating someone like they're buying a Ferrari. Yeah, no, no. Like, we, that's not the case. Like, no. you know, this is still a Kia. Yes. We know that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that was also, you know, a big bone of contention, yeah. too, is making it difficult, not making an enjoyable experience. And, you know, with stuff like that is, you know, it gives it a bad rap. I'm so glad you said still a Kia, because I think if it wasn't for the Kia Stinger and how it completely changed people's mindset on what Kia was as a brand, we would not be able to sell the EV9 that we sell today, the Kia EV6, a fully loaded, very, very exclusive Telluride. Mm -hmm. Kia would still have that horrible reputation that like, why why would I spend that much money on a Kia? And I am so glad you said that yeah. because that is pretty much the bulk of why they made the Stinger. Yes, that's exactly why. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, no, but think of it. If, they're, if it's not designed to necessarily be a volume seller, what is it designed to do? And in my opinion, this is a lot of speculation. Like I haven't called up Peter Schweier and I'm like, hey, why'd you design the Stinger? Um, but I think a lot of it has to do with the improved brand perception. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, oh, our lights just turned off. That's, That's fine. A, it's okay. Good thing it's a <laughs> podcast. <laughs> so another vehicle that we kind of saw before this, and I don't know if you remember this car. Do you remember the K900? Yes. I've well, I never got to see one because they didn't exist here. I've only seen one. Oh, okay. Yeah. But a V8 Kia. Yeah. No one bought it. We didn't even get one. I remember doing like the, well, we weren't uh, eligible to get one because oh. that was back when they had like the different, uh, <laughs> yeah, literally it was a little, <laughs> um, oh. But I remember I did like the Kia University for that car and I was like, wow, this car sounds amazing. And then they're like, yeah, don't, don't do that. We're never going to see that car. And I'm like, okay, fair. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, that was a little bit of an aside. But what this vehicle did is it, what the Stinger did is it more so drove people to buy other Kia product. It's all of a sudden you see this car, it looks beautiful. It performs great. It's got tech and safety features. It's cheaper than its counterparts. And that really even though it didn't necessarily perform well in terms of sales, it performed well in terms of reviews. Yep. So people were talking really positive about it. You know, I can't believe this is a Kia is what kind of kept coming up or wow, mm -hmm. Kia has come such a long way. And I think that that is super cool um, because that really drove people to take a look at the other Kia product, like the Telluride, the Sorento, the Nero, all of these new vehicles that people are seeing that are having a light shed on them. We're like, yeah, you know, maybe it's more than that family brand. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that Econo brand that I thought of 10 years ago. Yeah. 
I actually had a customer who traded in his Kia Stinger, and he wasn't he never considered Kia cars before the Stinger. He bought the Stinger because the horsepower for the money. Yeah, horsepower and the features for the money. So he never looked at Kia before that. When he was done with his Stinger because he had issues getting in and out of it, he mm. bought a Kia Sportage. Yeah. And he's like, I would have never done this before, before my mm -hmm. Stinger. So it really opened up people's eyes to the Kia brand. Which, yeah. Uh, and it did a great job at it. Now, we were having a discussion about this the other day, but a lot of people, what they saw as the fatal flaw for the Kia Stinger is the logo. Yep. And it's got that belt buckle logo, but also plastered right across it was Kia. So a part of me, and again, this is just me yapping and speculating, but I'm wondering if that was a part of why they decided to go and change the logo. Which I'm so glad they did because yeah. all of our cars look so much better now. Yeah, and it ultimately shifts that brand perception because, again, it's not just that belt buckle logo. Like, you can love everything about the car, but that logo, sometimes the name and the weight it carries. Yeah. It can be tough. It can be tough to justify. And that's what a lot of people were saying. But I think with this new logo, this new era, this new branding, I think it's been a really healthy rebrand. It makes these vehicles look a lot more, um, I, I don't know, I guess kind of luxe, tech savvy, yeah. modern. The big leagues. The big leagues. There you go. <laughs> but I don't know. What do you think? Um, I totally agree. So again, when this Kia Stinger was first introduced, hot car, looked amazing, interior was great. But the Kia logo was tired and it kind of had a tie towards what Kia was in the past. Yeah. When it came into Canada, it was that cheap and cheerful brand. You get a cheap car, good warranty. That was yeah. it. Nothing fancy about it, nothing stylish mm -hmm. about it. As they shifted into a vehicle or vehicle manufacturer that not only had great EVs, great performance cars, great luxury cars, mm -hmm. great family cars, but also great compact cars, they needed a logo that could say, we mean business and we are here to play. We're not yeah. messing around. Yeah. And the Stinger was a car that did that. Logo matched and now it's gone. Mm -hmm. So even though it wasn't a good seller and we think it did this much value for the brand, why did they discontinue it? It was a huge pivot for Kia. Mm -hmm. um, I think they discontinued it because there's bigger things coming. So the Kia Stinger, obviously there's nothing confirmed, but I can't imagine maybe that nameplate will come again in the future. It'll probably be an electric sports vehicle, mm -hmm. sports sedan, hopefully. I would love to see a sedan as opposed to a hatch. Or not a hatch, but, you know, an SUV yeah, or a like, crossover. Yeah. Like what Mitsubishi did with oh, the Eclipse. <laughs> oh, I saw I was behind one on the road this morning. Yeah, not good, not good. Um, so it'd be very nice to see the Stinger revive itself with mm -hmm. something sporty. Obviously, Kia is doing a big push towards EV. So if it's an EV, that's great. The Kia EV6 GT, that is the Stinger's replacement. And obviously, they're not the same car. The EV6 GT is a fully electric It's not necessarily SUV. A, a replacement, <laughs> but it's a new Halo project, and it's the Stinger yeah. passing the baton on. Yes, absolutely. And if you guys haven't seen that Kia ad... Please watch it. You might cry. Oh, I cried. It, it was actually really sad. Yeah. Shed a tear. <laughs> Single tear. It's a, it's a stinger. So I know this podcast episode has been a lot of our opinions and speculation, yeah. but a lot of it is true. So, <laughs> Oh, girl. <laughs> so I'm not going to say we're right, but we are. Um, Cite your sources. <laughs> with that being said, if you guys were around or paid attention to when the stinger came out, what were your thoughts on it? Was mm -hmm. it a car that you kind of stopped looking at and thought, what is that? That's a Kia? Let us know. If it's something that you've actually purchased or wanted to purchase, let us know. And if you're sad about it like I am, let us, let know. us know. Also, if we covered up the logo, would you think it's a Kia? No. Yeah. No. So obviously we had a lot of German designers. Yeah. Like Peter Schreier. Peter Schreier. <laughs> Alan Bierman. Albert Bierman. Exactly. So BMW background, Audi background. Yeah. There is a lot of German elements in that car and you mm. see it. And like I'm a big German car fan, so I like that. Yeah. And a majority of people do. If you covered up that logo, yeah. I don't know what car that is. Maybe we should do that as a social experiment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just ask people. Yeah. So if you guys want to see a social experiment, <laughs> or if you want to hear or see more of our podcast episodes, don't forget to follow us on wherever you listen to your podcast. If you want to see us talk, we also do this on YouTube. So our YouTube channel is the Kia Hyundai channel. My name's Gabby. Your I'm name? Charlotte. And you can find us also online at Brand for Kia, Gabby's underscore garage on Instagram, charis.cars.khc on Instagram. And that is all. Take care. Have a good rest of your day. We'll see you later. See ya. Bye.